How long have you lived here? Eight and a half years. <laughs> yeah. It's been a week since the broadcast of Steel Town Down. What have you heard from the community since then? Um, well, listen, uh, I think it's important to recognize I've, I've heard a lot from the community, uh, and the, the thread through everything is, is care. People care. People care about the issue, people care about the community, uh, and people care about uh, what they can do to assist. So I've heard a lot. There are a number of people who are concerned about, obviously, the issue in our community and want to see what they can do to help, but also want to understand what's going on in the community to, to address the issue. And then there's a group of people who are really concerned that, you know, the documentary was, was not necessarily balanced and, and showed one part of Sault Ste. Marie, but certainly not all of Sault Ste. Marie. And there were a lot of people who took exception to the the idea that we don't live in a beautiful and caring city. So, you know, I think I think those are fair concerns. Um, but as I said uh, on the weekend that it aired, we have a responsibility to recognize that this is a, it, it is a real significant issue in our community, and that there are people that are struggling with uh, mental health issues, and there are people that are struggling with substance abuse issues, and the opioid crisis is real in this country. Do you feel that the documentary accurately pro portrayed the real situation in the Sioux? Uh, do I think that the documentary showed the caring city that we live in, the beautiful city that we live in? No, I don't. But that wasn't the point of the documentary. The point of the documentary was to highlight how this issue has migrated from something that we were seeing in large city centers to something that we're now seeing in smaller city centers. And there's validity to that, right? It is something that we're seeing in smaller city centers. Um, could the documentary have been more balanced and shown some of the resources in the community? I think so. Could it have shown some of the efforts the community is making to address the challenges and support people who are dealing with them? I think so. In the documentary, it was stated that five people overdose in this city per day. Were you aware of this claim? Important question. And um, I think it's important to recognize that when the film crew came here, they had come from the hospital. So, uh, you know, I'm the mayor of the community. As the mayor of the community, Surrey Hospitals, Algoma Public Health, Group Health Center, they don't report to the mayor, and they don't give the mayor real-time stats. I can tell you that uh, when that stat was given to me, or the stat was given to me, it was given to me by somebody off-screen, and uh, it was the first time I had heard the stat. I have not been able to verify whether it's an accurate stat. No one had produced it for me or, or given it to me. Um, so it was the first time I would heard it, but my understanding in watching the documentary is they had just got it themselves. They had got that stat when they were at Surrey Hospitals talking to somebody, and they brought it over here and said, what do you think of it? You know, I have a tendency to be very direct and honest when I answer questions. Uh, and sometimes that serves me well, maybe sometimes it, it doesn't. But uh, to be honest, uh, that was the first time I had heard that stat. Have you been able to source where this statistic came uh, from? There was, in the fall, a, a spike in, in overdoses. But I don't think the, the statistics that Oklahoma Public Health has for 2017 are consistent, really, with the statistics that the statistic that was thrown that was thrown at me. Um, but uh, let's not lose sight of the fact that that statistic aside, we do recognize and, and, and appreciate that there's a problem, and that there's a problem that we as a community should should address. And uh, that's what I don't want to be to be lost in this. Um, there. There is relevant information, it's, it, there's data, uh, we're going to be getting some of that data, I think we'll see some of that data at uh, Council on Tuesday, and uh, it's important that we recognize that, that there's a challenge in the community and we should address that challenge. As to where the, the Vice Media Director got his statistics from and whether his statistics are accurate, I don't know, uh, you'd have to kind of talk to him about that. What, if any, work has been done or is going to be done with the various agencies in Sault Ste. Marie who combat these issues? Yeah, so this is largely a, a healthcare issue, right? So, you know, healthcare falls under the jurisdiction of the provincial government, so you have to really look at a lot of the provincial agencies that are here and working on these things. And a lot of them, at times, they're working together. But we have Surya Hospitals, who has uh, support for mental health and addictions. Uh, you have Ogoma Public Health, obviously, who is the, the public health uh, provider for the whole community that, that are responsible for a public health in the Algoma district and you know obviously they have a role to play to play in this there is the uh, the Algoma leadership table which is a number of agencies that that uh, come together to try and 
address some of the socioeconomic challenges in the community. But there's a, there's a task force. It's the there's a Sault Ste. Marie Drug Strategy Committee, and there's 17, uh, I think 17 off the top of my head. I think there's about 17 organizations involved in that. So uh, we're actually just uh, in the process of trying to sort out how to do a proper educational for council, so we can get council up to speed on all of the. Uh, resources available in the community and we think if we can do that once we have council up to speed on that we'll, we'll do a presentation at council so at council we can do a public presentation to show people all the different resources that are available in the community but it's important to recognize that there are a lot of really uh, caring people in the community um, that are working on these issues in, in in the film you saw Desiree Beck who works over the group health center it's another agency um, and they're working and we're trying to support the community but we, we need help and we need more support. Many comments circulating imply that the issue is being managed between the methadone and the naloxone kits. But what are the next steps for the city in terms of combating the issue? So, uh, last year, Surrey Hospital started working on its proposal for a level three facility. Um, and they put that proposal together. I think I wrote a, a letter of support in uh, maybe the spring, early summer of last year on that. And they filed their applications for that uh, level three facility, I believe, in November. So that's going through the processes, uh, which resulted in the CEO of the hospital I'm meeting and him asking for my political support to, to lobby uh, both the LID and the government to, to fund this in Sault Ste. Marie. So we're, we're in the midst of that. And again, this is all independent of that documentary. So people have to recognize that this was happening independent of and before the documentary. Surface. Are you or council prepared to call an overdose crisis so in this city? Council, council really isn't the agency that declares public health crises. We have a number of health agencies in the city. You have the Health Center, you have Syria Hospitals, you have Agoma Public Health. And really, with respect to a, a public health crisis, Agoma Public Health would be the lead agency. Now, as the mayor of the community, if uh, the leadership of those organizations came to me and said, we would like you to help us raise the profile of an issue, we would absolutely do that. Um, council can essentially make any kind of declaration it wants to make, but it's, it's just that, right? It's a, it's a declaration, and it helps raise the profile of an issue. One of the reasons why I agreed to uh, do the short documentary was that I recognized it was an issue here, and I wanted to help raise the profile of it. I, I thought that uh, it was something that people that were struggling with substance abuse issues, I thought it was better for them to see their mayor acknowledge the substance abuse challenges than refuse to comment. And uh, I didn't want to be the mayor that refused to comment. So I wanted to acknowledge that these challenges are real and they're in the community. Um, once we have brought council up to speed and given council all of the relevant factual information, uh, which we're compiling from the different agencies, council can decide if it wants at that point to make a declaration. Council can decide to do that. To me, it's more important that we're talking about the issue and that the people that are actually in a place to directly deal with the issue, the, the health care providers, that they have the resources they need. So it's more important for me to spend my time helping the hospital lobby for the resources they need. And it's more important to, from my perspective, to actually try and get things done and improve the situation than to simply talk about how we can improve the situation. So we're working on those things. Um, but if, if we were to make a declaration, it would come uh, as the result of discussions with the public health agencies and on their recommendation. 